Hi, my name is Audrey Colton. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator, and I'm part of the diabetes team here at Cohen Children's Medical Center. I'm here today to help you learn how to manage your child's diabetes through good nutrition and carb counting. One of the things that you might be wondering is, can my child eat out? Is my child now on a strict diet? What happens with birthday parties or school? I will be going over these topics with you. One main goal for me as the registered dietitian with you and your family is to focus on healthy eating to help maintain good blood sugar control and to reach your child's target blood sugars. We do not recommend any type of strict diet. In general, the diet for children with diabetes is just normal eating, healthy eating, just like everybody else would. So any child that we see that has type 1 or type 2 diabetes, we recommend just a regular healthy diet. Why focus on carbohydrates? Well, carbohydrates are the nutrients and foods that raise blood sugars the most. Carbohydrates are converted into energy, and that's used by insulin, and that's what our body uses for fuel. Also, your child needs carbohydrates every day, and it's very, very important that you learn and your family learn how to carbohydrate count. Carbohydrate counting means adding up the total grams of carbohydrate for each meal and snack. You will find this information on nutrition facts labels, carbohydrate counting books, there's apps for your tablet or smartphones, as well as multiple websites and online resources. We use carbohydrate counting for basal bolus insulin therapy. This is when you will be matching your insulin dose to the grams of carbohydrate. It is very important for you and your family to learn how to carbohydrate count. Carbohydrate counting is the ideal method for achieving target blood sugars. The goal of carbohydrate counting is to balance food intake with medication and activity. It is a complex relationship between administration of the insulin, the content and quality of the diet, as well as the duration and frequency of exercise. You might be asking yourself now, what can my child eat? And the good news is, is your child can eat almost any type of food, but moderation is the key and there is some planning that will need to be done. First of all, in terms of the carbohydrate counting, the calculation of the insulin doses, but overall, we want your child to eat what he or she usually eats. There is some exceptions which I will be discussing. Our foods consist of carbohydrates, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals, and water. Some foods have one or two of these nutrients, some foods have all of these nutrients. We need to eat all of these foods for a healthy diet. You may ask which of these nutrients increase blood sugar. Carbohydrates do increase blood sugars the most, and generally about 15 minutes after your child starts eating, the blood sugar starts to increase. Some examples of carbohydrates would be your starchy foods, bread, cereals, rice, pasta, some starchy vegetables, and dried beans. But also protein and fat, if eaten in large quantities, can increase blood sugars later on. These types of nutrients are very slowly digested, but some of them are converted into sugar. You may ask, shouldn't my child restrict carbohydrates now? The answer is no. About half of your child's diet should come from carbohydrates. It is needed for normal growth and development. This is what your body uses for fuel, and also this is the number one fuel or energy for the brain. Carbohydrates are the foundation of a healthy eating plan. They contain important nutrients such as vitamins, minerals, and fiber. You may ask which foods contain carbohydrates. There are three main food groups. Starches, such as bread, cereal, rice, pasta, and starchy vegetables like potatoes, corn, and peas. There's fruits, fresh fruits, canned fruits and dried fruits, as well as milk and yogurt. These are the three main food groups that have carbohydrates. Foods that do not have carbohydrate are proteins, such as beef, pork, 
chicken, fish, lunch meat, as well as cheese, eggs, and tofu. Fats, such as butter, margarine, cream cheese, oil, mayonnaise, some salad dressings, and bacon. There are foods that do have a little bit of carbohydrate and your child may need insulin to cover these carbohydrates, such as nuts, seeds, peanut butter, nut butters, and cottage cheese. What about fiber? Fiber is very important to incorporate into your child's diet. Fiber is the unabsorbed part of the plant cell that causes a very slow release of blood sugar or glucose. It also can help maintain or control blood sugar because it slows down how quickly carbohydrates are absorbed into the bloodstream. We do recommend a healthy diet full of vegetables, fruits, lean protein, low-fat dairy, and whole grains. We also recommend treats in moderation, just like everyone else should, but not too much fast food and sweets. It is important to know that we do not recommend eating only diet or sugar-free foods. We also do not recommend strict low-carbohydrate diets or no-carbohydrate diets. It is also important to know that your child should not drink regular fruit juice and sugar-sweetened beverages such as tea, lemonade, fruit punch, sweet coffee drinks, and regular sodas. However, your child can have fruit juice or a sweet beverage if he or she does have a low blood sugar. Four ounces of fruit juice or sweetened beverages such as lemonade has approximately 15 grams of carbohydrate, which is all your child needs to treat a low blood sugar to bring it up. Watch out for some condiments because some of these do have a lot of sugar and can increase blood sugar. They need to be included in your carbohydrate counting. For example, barbecue sauce. If you see here, the serving size is two tablespoons. The total carbohydrate is 13. Now some of us may not think that, we, that barbecue sauce has carbohydrates, but it, it does. Ketchup is also an example of a condiment that has carbohydrates that you do need to remember to add in to your carbohydrate counts. As you can see here, the serving size is one tablespoon and the total carbohydrate is five grams of carbohydrate for that tablespoon. Now most children eat a lot more than one tablespoon of ketchup. You need to add all of that up and count that as part of the carbohydrate amounts. We do encourage eating a healthy diet. This means eating foods packed with good nutrition from all of the food groups, as well as your child should start their day with breakfast. For those on basal bolus insulin therapy, it is important to give insulin to cover all carbohydrates for meals and snacks. It is also important to learn and to know accurate carbohydrate counting. In terms of snacking, it is important to include some healthy snacks as well as some of the treats. Some healthy snacks include fruit and yogurt, crackers with peanut butter or cheese, a sandwich on whole wheat bread, whole grain, low sugar cereal and low fat milk, low fat popcorn, pretzels and nuts. Snacks with very little carbohydrate include cheese, lunch meat, grilled chicken, a tablespoon of nuts, a few olives, diet gelatin, or sugar-free ice pops. Basal bolus insulin therapy allows for flexibility for when your child eats. There is no set meal plan. There is no set time schedule for when your child needs to eat. But we do recommend eating three meals a day spaced evenly with a few snacks, and this does help control blood sugar. Insulin is also used to lower an elevated blood sugar to target range. We do need you to watch out for overeating and excessive snacking. Exercise lowers blood sugars, so you will need to plan ahead for your child's activities. Extra snacks may be needed to help prevent low blood sugars. Check blood sugars before, during, and after the exercise. And for prolonged exercise or activity, it is important to check every 45 to 60 minutes during the exercise. 
Insulin may need to be decreased prior to or after the activity. It is also important to remember that your child needs to stay hydrated during exercise and also throughout the day. Here are some examples of some good choices for what your child can drink. Water, seltzer, also low-fat milk, which is a carbohydrate, unsweetened decaffeinated teas, unsweetened herbal teas. And for your sports enthusiasts, if your child does like to drink Gatorade or Powerade or some of the other sports beverages, it is important to get the sugar-free versions. If your child does not want to drink water, he or she can have diet beverages, but in moderation. Some examples would be Crystal Light, Diet Snapple, Diet Arizona, or diet sodas such as Diet Coke or Diet Ginger Ale. When looking for treats for your children, be careful for labels that say sugar-free. For example, sugar-free candies, sugar-free chocolates. Foods that have or claim that they are sugar-free still have carbohydrate. We do recommend most of the time just eating the regular food and not the diet or sugar-free versions as some of these can cause stomach upset there's a lot of chemicals in the product. So we do recommend just regular treats, a regular cookie, a little bit of chocolate candy, everything in moderation. You may ask, does the type of carbohydrate matter? And the answer is yes. It could depend on the processing, the type of carbohydrate, whether it has fiber, how it is cooked, or if you're eating it with protein and fat. Let's talk about tools for carbohydrate counting. The Nutrition Facts label is very helpful. It has a lot of good information. Measuring cups. These are the types of measuring cups I do recommend. The one that's the one cup measurement, half cup, third of a cup, and so forth. Measuring spoons. To measure ketchup, peanut butter, and other sauces. A food scale. This is very important to have a food scale to weigh your food to figure out the carbohydrates as well as a calculator to calculate the grams of carbohydrate and your insulin doses. Other tools for carbohydrate counting include apps used with your smartphone or your tablets. An example would be the Calorie King app, which corresponds with the Calorie King book. Other useful apps would be Go Meals, as well as My Fitness Pal. Other tools would be websites, carb counting books, and all the chain restaurants have their nutrition information online. For basic carbohydrate counting, one serving or portion of carbohydrate food has approximately 15 grams of carbohydrate. These foods have approximately 15 grams of carbohydrate, a slice of bread or a small dinner roll, a half a cup of corn or mashed potatoes, a third of a cup of cooked pasta or rice, half a cup of canned fruit, or a small piece of fresh fruit, eight ounces of white milk, or six ounces of plain yogurt, or no sugar added yogurt. One of the easiest tools that you will use is the Nutrition Facts label. And I would like to explain what you're looking for on a label. Here's a cereal box. There's two main pieces of the Nutrition Facts label that's very important for carb counting. One is the serving size which for this cereal is three quarters of a cup, which means you take a quarter cup measurement and it's three quarter cups in a bowl. And the total carbohydrate for that serving is 24 grams of carbohydrate. Next to the serving size, you'll see 30 grams. That's how much that serving size weighs on a gram scale. Be careful, do not use that as carbohydrates you're always going to look down where it says total carbohydrate and use that amount. There's another Nutrition Facts label that's a little bit more complicated I'd like to discuss with you, and that is the pasta label. If you notice, the serving size, which is the most important piece to look for, the serving size says two ounces, 56 grams, one eighth of the box. Now that's all weight measurement, and the two ounces is dry but they don't tell you. The total carbohydrate is 42 grams of carbohydrate. I want to explain to you 
that the two ounces dry means one cup cooked. So that's one cup of cooked pasta for this label has 42 grams of carbohydrate. And what that looks like is this. This is 42 grams of carbohydrate. Now linguine or thin pastas look like more volume. But if you use rigatoni, it's still one cup cooked. The amount will look smaller. Here is a chart that might be helpful in estimating portion sizes. Many foods do not have a food label, such as fruits and vegetables. I'm going to be giving you an example of how to use the food scale to estimate the carbohydrate content of an apple. Now most fruits, such as an apple, peach, pear, or plum, for every four ounces of weight, it is approximately 15 grams of carbohydrate. I have two apples here. If I put this apple on my scale, it reads approximately nine and a half ounces. When I calculate that, this apple is 37 grams of carbohydrate. And when I put this apple on here, it calculates 19 grams of carbohydrate. So these are useful tools. Um, a lot of people tell me they stopped eating fruit because it makes their blood sugar go too high. But the reason is inaccuracy in the carbohydrate counting of the fruits. Another example will be grapes. Approximately three ounces of grapes have 15 grams of carbohydrate, and that is what this looks like on a food scale. So this amount has 15 grams of carbohydrate. So if your child has six ounces of grapes, it would be 30 grams of carbohydrate. For potatoes, a three ounce potato has approximately 15 grams of carbohydrate. So this is not a three ounce potato. A three ounce potato is a small white potato or a small red potato, approximately this size. But this potato weighs approximately 10 and a half ounces. So to convert that into carbohydrates, this whole potato, including the skin, is about 55 grams of carbohydrate. The next example I would like to show you using the food scale are different types of breads. Your child can have bagels and rolls and bread. We do recommend whole wheat, however it's still important that if you do not have a food label such as fresh, fresh rolls or fresh bagels that you need to weigh them. The calculation for these foods would be for every ounce of bread or rolls or French bread or roti, for every ounce it's 15 grams of carbohydrate. So I have a bagel and I put this on my scale and make sure it's on zero. Now this bagel weighs five ounces. So to do the math it would be five ounces times 15 grams. So this bagel weighs five ounces. This is 75 grams of carbohydrate for this bagel. For a roll, now this roll looks much bigger than the bagel. However, it weighs less. So if I put this on the scale, for every ounce, it's 15 grams of carbohydrate. This roll weighs two and a half ounces. Therefore, it is 33 grams of carbohydrate. One of children's favorite foods is pizza. Now your local pizzeria has far more carbohydrates than the chains. So here is an example of two sizes of pizza from different pizzerias. A regular slice of pizza, such as this one, has approximately 45 to 50 grams of carbohydrate. 
This is a larger slice. This one has approximately 75 grams of carbohydrate. I do recommend when you go to a pizzeria and your child has a slice of pizza, count that slice as 45 grams of carbohydrate. And remember, the crust and the sauce do count. That is included. There are a few questions you may have in mind that I would like to talk about. One of the questions is, can your child have candy? And the answer is yes. Your child can have candy. We don't recommend it that often. However, the best choice for candy would be chocolate because it does have some fat in it, which does not cause such a high rise in blood sugars. Another question would be, can your family go out to eat now in restaurants? And the answer is yes, but definitely some planning is needed. You need to look up the menus on the website, look at the carb counts, or download some of the apps so that you can correctly carbohydrate count what your child will be eating. What about school lunch? Your child will need insulin in school, and if they enjoy eating the school lunch, you will talk to the school nurse who will be able to provide you most of the time the information about the carbohydrate amounts for the school lunches. Many times the schools do post these on their websites. Does my child have to have snacks? It does depend. If your child is very active, you may need snacks to keep the blood sugar in a normal range. If your child is very hungry in the afternoon, your child can have snacks, but may need insulin to cover that. But as a general rule, we do want your child to have three meals a day, and if they don't feel like having snacks, that's okay. Another common question is, how many grams of carbohydrate should your child have per day? And your registered dietitian here, myself or my colleague, will be able to give you that answer. But for the most part, we do not recommend excessive carbohydrates, like one or 200 grams per meal, but a safe range would be 45 grams to 60 grams of carbohydrate per meal and roughly 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrate for snacks, but it's very individualized. You may be wondering what to expect at home. Your child may be very hungry, and this may last for approximately a month or less, and your child may gain some weight because most children do lose weight before being diagnosed with diabetes, and this is just the weight that's being regained. Parents of children who are newly diagnosed with diabetes may feel like you're surrounded by diet police. What I mean by diet police are your family, friends, your spouse, in-laws, experts at home that are trying to give you nutrition advice that might be different than what we have taught you. So if you do have any questions or concerns, you can always call our office to speak to the registered dietitian and we will help you with any questions that you may have. Thank you for watching this video and feel free to refer back to it for any specific questions you may have. Please feel free to call us with any questions you might have regarding the nutrition or carbohydrate counting and the care of your child's diabetes.